coming up on Mountain News this morning. State officials are looking for local input when it comes to how Kentucky's roads can improve. And one Kentuckian is speaking out about their complex experience with illegal immigration. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, Mountain family. My name is Amelia Lee. The time is almost 5 o'clock, about 30 seconds away from that. Today's date, November 14th. It is Thursday. It's also time to check in with meteorologist Megan Dusmal for a look at your forecast. Megan, I was in for a rude awakening this morning with the rain. I had to run back in, get a coat. I'll show you later, it's orange, and I, I was very not expecting that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't expecting it this morning, but even still, I just walked outside and I was like, oh man, I forgot about that. It's, it's just every single morning, we got that rain. I grabbed my raincoat and you will too. It is a little bit chilly, so opting for a raincoat instead of just an umbrella might be the way to go this morning. We're looking in the 40s for most of the area as you're traveling more towards the west. That's when you're going to see a little bit warmer temperatures, 54 degrees in Somerset in Monticello. But as you're traveling more towards the east, that's where you're going to see more of the cooler temperatures, 37 in Wise, 41 in Clintwood. And we are warming up today, but we're not going to get as warm as we were yesterday. Really looking in the upper 50s with some places potentially hitting that 60 degree mark and we have the rain today it's moving through our area and we're going to continue to see that throughout the next couple of hours and into your evening so it'll be tapering off but that's something to look out for as you're heading out the door this morning and as you're going through the next couple hours you'll see those rain chances throughout the day with those temperatures increasing ever so slightly and having cloudy skies even after the rain is even gone Amelia all right, thank you, Megan. So far this year, 83 pedestrians have been hit and killed by cars in the Commonwealth. That's according to the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. With each death comes renewed calls to improve pedestrian safety. Samantha Valentino explains what goes into making these changes. Safety of the public is the number one priority of the Transportation Cabinet and Team Kentucky. Natasha Lacey is the PIO for the Department of Highways District 7 for the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet. That includes motorists, pedestrians, cyclists, and those that might be using scooters or non-motorized vehicles. Lacey says cabinet engineers routinely study potential improvements for all highway users based on need and funding. Currently, we have audits for different intersections that we're conducting and reviewing those to see what type of changes we could make. The cabinet says their engineers are going to busy areas like Winchester and Nicholasville roads to see if intersections would benefit from additions such as crosswalks or added lighting. But what happens when community members request these changes? Lacey says requests for things like sidewalks and lighting should go through your city or county local government, even if the road in question is a state road. And we always welcome local government to send requests to us because we're willing to review those at any time and we do that on a regular basis to see what the needs for the public are. Lacey says outside of construction projects, the state does not construct sidewalks and street lighting is done by the city through the state's permit process. In Lexington, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. Lacey says communities also have the option to apply for grants and other funding through KYTC's Department for Rural and Municipal Aid. These grants could include lighting, sidewalks, and other local infrastructure projects. President-elect Donald Trump has promised a mass deportation of undocumented immigrants. Heather Hadi is an immigration attorney in Lexington. Immigration can be a sensitive subject for Hadi because her husband is currently listed as undocumented. But she says he's in the process of becoming legal. She says talk of future mass deportation has the immigration community on edge. This is a really a shock to the community, um, and there is a lot of fear. So anytime someone knocks at our door, our hearts start racing a little bit. Hadi says fear has carried over to people who are in the country legally, adding that those who are legal permanent residents are also scared of being deported, even though they have legal status. Elkhorn City elected its new mayor last week, officially placing interim mayor Nathan Bryant in the seat. 
Bryant says he hopes to help the city move past its current financial struggles. Already working with the council to tackle the more than $300,000 in debt created during the run of the previous administration. He says while those concerns are being addressed, the city should also consider how to build a better tomorrow. Now that he is at the helm, the main goal is expanding tourism and inviting economic development. You know, I think the side-by-sides, the kayaking, our tourism is going to have to really step up. You know, that's, that's where we're going to have to go with, with that aspect of it. And then this new road, bringing new jobs in. Bryant says once the current audits are complete and the city has access to its grant funding again, more developments can start. Nine counties received grant funding for infrastructure improvements at county fairgrounds. Essel County was awarded nearly $82,000. The plan is to use the money for a new building as well as electric and water, parking lot, excavation and drainage work. Thank you for getting your day started with us here on Mountain News this morning. When we return, bump stocks and other gun conversion devices are back in the spotlight on Capitol Hill. And it's raining right now. Where is it headed? I'll have that answer coming up.